everyone thanks for joining the q4 fi 18 earnings call of starlight tech earlier today the company announced their fourth quarter results uh, for fi 18 and posted a strong 66% growth in net profits and also a very strong start to fi 19 with an um, order book of 5200 crores um, on the call we have with us today dr uh, anand agarwal the ceo and Mr. Anupam Jindal, the CFO of Starlight Technologies, who will walk us through some of the business and financial highlights and also discuss the long-term strategic direction of the company. I would like to hand over the conference to um, Dr. Agarwal. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, Snigda. Welcome to the Starlight Tech Earnings Conference call. We are very pleased to share a strong set of results for FY 2018. And I trust that all of you have had an opportunity to go through the results document, which was shared earlier today and is also available on the website. I will start with briefly talking about how we see the industry landscape shaping up, our unique positioning to serve the demand of future data networks, followed by key business highlights during the last quarter. Anupam will then walk you through the financial performance. I will start with the industry landscape. In this slide, uh, what we have captured, it presents an interesting analysis of uh, cumulative capex spent globally by top telcos across various generations of network technologies and corresponding fiber deployment around the same period. What is coming out very evidently is that every network generation has invited higher capex by telcos. However, the increase in fiber capex uh, has been disproportionately of higher magnitude, almost three times uh, from going from 3G to 4G generation change. The trend is clearly reflective of the changing constitution of CAPEX, tilting more and more towards the fiber-led infrastructure and increasing softwareization of the networks. We believe that this trend will continue with uh, as the networks grow tomorrow with much higher bandwidth coupled with ultra-low latencies that will magnify the role of fiber in the overall network capex. And the next era in telecom networks is all about 5G, where the performance goals include accommodating a greater number of devices through the fast expansion of IoT, enhanced broadband-like connectivity on mobile devices, and improving network economics. The transformative impact of 5G and LTE on industries and verticals such as retail, storage, commuting, communication, banking, and finance, to name a few, is expected to be magnified along with the unleashing of newer use case and applications, which were till now unfeasible at prevailing network speeds. As 5G will support a multitude of new applications, there is a wide variety of requirements, including higher peak and user data rates, reduced latency, enhanced indoor coverage, and better leveraging of existing infrastructure through greater energy and spectral efficiency. These goals will primarily be met by taking fiber deeper into the network by, supported by the combined use of more spectrum, higher spectral efficiency, as well as densification of cells. And it is becoming very, very uh, critical that 5G is inviting a structural change in the design topology of 5G network compared to the previous generation of networks. If we have to decipher 5G from a simplistic network deployment perspective, it will be 5G will go to be fiber-like speed in the last few meters in the form of wireless connectivity. This technical parameter of ultra-high speed with lower latency will be achieved by shrinking the macro cell into multiple smaller cells. Number of small cells in 5G environment when compared to 4G macro sites may compound to 5 to 10 times, depending on the throughput and latency requirement of the users. Technically, small cells are able to extend the coverage of mobile networks into indoor areas where outdoor signals do not penetrate well or add to network capacity in areas with very dense data usages. Small cell has limited strength when compared to a macro cell, but drive up network quality through a closer presence to the user. 
fiber for backhaul and front haul is critical to realize the 5G network goals so surrounding data speeds latency and bandwidth and multiple nodes of fiber connected to every cell in the 5G network through fiber will enable the ultra high speed connectivity and low latency as you see in this infographic fiber requirement for 5G is 2 and a half to 5 times of what was required for 4G it is now inevitable that for a seamless 5G experience fiber will need to go deeper in every element of the network and uh, this is clearly translating that we are seeing in the evolution of fiber demand globally the demand for five optical fiber has witnessed a strong growth for over a decade while china is an important consumer of fiber cables it is important to highlight that there has been growth in demand across all major regions of the world 5g network creation is expected to propel fiber demand to newer heights as the network specification require a ramp up in fiber backhauling which will be used more widely and deeply in the network thus even the most conservative estimates of fiber deployment for 5g network factor a jump in fiber consumption of at least 2 and a half times compared to 4g extensive fiber demand is here to stay for another 10 years based on 5g deployment cycle in next 8 to 10 years now i'm going to switch to our unique positioning in the overall eco ecosystem in this slide we map the manufacturing value chain of fiber as you can see the preform stage dictates the supply side of fiber production change there is restricted competition at this stage as the technology and know how to manufacture preform is an intellectual property that serves as a competitive edge and thus derives maximum value the fiber drawing part of the value chain is less technology intensive and has relatively more number of players than preform manufacturing and the cabling end of the production chain is more of localized model and requires greater degree of differentiation to drive value creation due to difference dependence on the other parts of the value chain sterlite tech is the only fully integrated player in asia pacific excluding japan which manufactures fiber from the bare silicon ore which is a basic raw material going up to the end user product for telcos and enterprises initial deployment of 5g networks emergence of smart cities as well as the increasing propensity of broadband has driven global demand for fiber steadily upwards in calendar year 2017 we witnessed global demand for fiber surpassing preform capacity for the first time ever keeping the tightness in fiber supply demand dynamics we expect the global demand supply mismatch to persist in 2018 and growth in global demand will continue to enable the absorption of plant capacity additions on the preform side our end to end capabilities enable us to cater to the needs of future network and put us in a unique position to serve our customers delivering both products and services and measuring outcomes at multiple stages of the value chain has provided invaluable perspectives and insights enabling us to reengineer products and processes to solve customers network requirements and increase asset monetization as the only company with an end to end capability that extends it to software we are uniquely poised to cater to the present and emerging needs of the networks of the future equally important the wide portfolio and relationships with customers in over 100 countries and across the value chain opens up more opportunities for us in new customer segments regions as well as markets and at uh, sterlite tech technology lies at the core of all our offerings the product business where we have a legacy of more than 20 years is uniquely differentiated with our deep know how of interdisciplinary technologies from glass science chemical engineering wave optics and application engineering which goes into the making of a very specialized intellectually protected product our growing repository of 189 patents on products and processes is a testimony of our deep reliance on technology 
that we used to cater to telecom operators as well as enterprises across the world. In our services and software vertical, the core value proposition is built on network design for future broadband networks. Our center for, for smarter networks in Gurgaon is one of its kind network lab in the country to support our con customers' requirements for an end-to-end -end solution of all their data network creation across all layers from concept, design, to implementation and management. I would now touch upon briefly some of the key business highlights for the quarter. As most of you would be aware, we are adding another 20 million kilometers to our fiber capacity through a mega greenfield expansion project to be completed by June of 2019. We are happy to inform that we are on an accelerated path to bring about 10 million of the expanded capacity as phase one of this project by end of this current calendar year. This would allow some benefit of the expanded optical fiber capacity, which we are currently running over 95% utilization to flow into the current financial year. On our optical fiber cables front, we are seeing a sharp traction in utilization level, which will continue to go upwards as we move forward. On the services side, we are pleased to announce our highest ever order win with an award of the 3,500 crores of advanced purchase order from the Indian Navy to design, build, and manage a state-of-the-art communications network. This is our second large multi-year deal, the first one being the creation of an intrusion-proof communication network for the Indian Army. And it, it vindicates our view of the deep and immense opportunity for large-scale system integration in India. As we shared earlier, this is the first time that an integrated naval communications network at such a scale is being built in India. Unparalleled in scope and size, the project includes the creation of a high-capacity internet protocol, multi-protocol label switching network. Once completed, it will link multiple Indian naval sites and India-administered islands. The project value of 3,500 crores consists of network design and building, which covers about 75% of the contract value and will be completed in two years after receipt of the confirmed purchase order, following which network maintenance will extend for another seven years. On the Smart City Suite offerings, the Kakinada Smart City project is nearing completion and the steady build-up of a reference-based places as well as, as the opportunity landscape for smart cities as, and BharatNet is progressing well. In the software business, we continue to win uh, very interesting uh, orders. The first one being an end-to-end -end OSS and BSS deal with India's leading multi-service op operator that caters to 8 million households. The other one is an enterprise Wi-Fi uh, order which with, with one of the leading operators in India. So overall, it has been a great quarter both for production ramp-up as well as deal wins across our various services and software business. The other aspect is the last few years have been phenomenal for our international business with exports more than tripling on the backdrop of our deepening presence in Europe as well as marquee tier one telco wins. We now have a very balanced geographical split to our revenues with both exports and domestic business contributing equally to the top line and equally strong future outlook. And we start FY19 with an all-time or, or high order book of more than rupees 5,000 crores. Interesting for our stakeholders is to note that the growth in our order book has been much sharper at almost 73% year on year, corresponding to a revenue growth of 20%, which is a testimony of high expected demand for fiber in times to come, as well as a growing customer engagement engine. This leads us a... Uh, uh, to create a very high visibility as well as predictability for future and gives us a much higher degree of confidence on optimum utilization of the expanded capacity. As I explained in the earlier section, we are happy to share information of the acceleration in fiber cap capacity addition and target to bring additional 10 million to our fiber capacities by end of this calendar year. On the 
cable side, we currently have a capacity of 15 million kilometers, which is seeing higher utilization quarter on quarter, and uh, we should be running very close to uh, between 90 to 100 percent capacity in the current financial year. As we see strong signs of a further uptake from our existing customers as well as new wins. With this, I would now like to hand over to Anupam, who will take us through the financial highlights for the quarter. Uh, thanks, Anand. Before I walk you through our current quarter performance, I would like to highlight a strong five-year history of telecom business performance. The five-year EBITDA CAGR of 45, 44% evidences a structurally strong business model of your company. We are equally excited about the fact that this growth has come with a much higher capital efficiency, with a very strong focus on ROC as one of the key levers of growth. We exit this year at ROC levels of over 30%. At PAT level, profit after tax level, we have more than doubled our profits in two years since our demerger from power business in FI16 from Rs. 154 crore in FI16 to 334 crore in FI18. This slide gives the quarterly financial performance trend for the company on a consolidated basis over the last few quarters. As you can see, revenues for the quarter stood at Rs. 847 crore, registering a 20% year-on-year growth. But the EBITDA grew to 44% on a YOY basis, driven by growth in the product volume and supported by project execution pro uh, progress, progressing firmly on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. A profit after tax for the quarter stands at rupees 112 crore, registering a 77% growth Y on Y. Moving to slide 20, you will observe that balance sheet remains our strong focus as we plan for scalable growth in all our businesses. Our net debt to equity, which is another key metric we track uh, closely, is now. Uh, at 0.7x levels. During the year FI18, we managed to generate positive cash generation after funding for growth capex. We are now comfortably placed from balance sheet perspective and will keep a strong watch on key parent matrices as we plan for our growth. This slide brings you to the concise version of PNL and balance sheet for the full year FI18 compared with FI17. At about 25%, our EBITDA margins continue to remain amongst the industry best. We continue to deliver a strong growth over FI17 on all key matrices, revenue, EBITDA, and fact, <laughs> ROC at the end of FI18 stands at 30% and remains a key metric for our future growth. Before we move to Q&A, I would like to reiterate that our accelerated growth levers are predicated on exponential growth in all business verticals. The combination of several underlying trends has led to multi multiplier growth in demand for fiber globally. We are confident about the demand for products and services in India, given the ambition to rapidly upgrade and transform communication platforms and networks. We also believe that the smart cities and software verticals have a potential to scale up rapidly. Addressing multiple scalar opportunities through a simplified business model with predictable outcome has given us the confidence to continue achieving a scalar growth on a year-on-year basis and deliver sustainable value creation to our shareholders. This brings us to the end of our initial remarks, and I would like to hand it over to the moderator for Q&A. Sure. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Participants who wish to ask questions may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking questions. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have the first question from the line of Varshit Shah from MK Global. Uh, uh, hi, sir. Uh, thanks for the opportunity and congrats on a good set of numbers. 
Uh, so just wanted to uh, some clarity on capital raising. So I think you have passed a resolution for uh, raising 2,000 crore by NCD. So could you just elaborate on that, or what are the plans out there? Uh, any, I mean, anything else? Or is it additional capital, or is it just to retire debt, or anything like that? Yeah. So basically, this is our annual exercise where we take uh, uh, shareholders' resolution to raise funds either through NCD or various other debt instruments. Hmm. as well as uh, any other equity measures. Right, so right. We have been taking that uh, until last year for about 1,000 crore. This year we have increased. <laughs> right, so, right, right. So that's one of the observations. So any uh, particular number which you are looking at this year or... Uh, I think at this moment we don't have any requirement as such. Right. That's sufficient. So there's nothing uh, on the card right now. Right, right. I, I think that's it from my side. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Alok Devra from IIFL Wealth. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, sir, and uh, congratulations on a good set of numbers. Uh, so uh, I just had uh, uh, two questions. One was on the order book uh, front. Uh, so I believe this order book of 5,200 crore does not include that 3,500 crore order. Uh, that is, is that right. Correct? Yeah, that's right. So, any particular reason we have not included because that was uh, received in some time in February, and uh, so is it like it's going to it's not finalized yet, or it's it's going to get finalized in say next quarter or something, or what's the situation on that? Now look, uh, this is a uh, like a defense order, and uh, there, there are processes within defense. We had to uh, talk about it because we have received the APO. But it goes through and it is paid by the uh, DOT, so it goes through a cabinet approval. So all these processes will take another two, three months before which it, we can receive the final contract purchase order in our hand. Right. But the order, order is sort of secured. I mean, there is no question. Yeah, the APO, uh, I mean, the APO process itself is towards that itself. Right. And, uh, sir, out of this 3,500 crore, how much would be... Uh, you know, products and how much would be EPC or would it be like significant part would be EPC? Uh, Alok, yeah, we don't do EPC. Uh, so 75% of this will be system integration. There will right. be no products and about right. 25% is O&M for the subsequent uh, seven years. Right. So what would be the margin in this? A margin profile is very similar to what we have for the other uh, system integration business, uh, about uh, 12 to 14%. Right. Just one last question. Uh, what would uh, have been our cap capacity utilization in OF and OSC uh, in the fourth quarter? OF, we are running very close to 100% and OSC running at about 90%. Okay. Uh, okay. That's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Karan Uppal from High Town Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, this is Mukul, uh, you know, on, uh, from High Town. Uh, so, um, uh, Anand, first question was, uh, you know, on, on the margin performance which you delivered in, in this quarter. It was quite impressive. Uh, how should we look at uh, the long-term margin outlook, uh, you know, for Starlight considering the uh, this quarter's performance? Uh, you know, was, was the uh, Q4 impacted by uh, any um, any sales in the spot market or uh, or did you undertook a pricing increase, uh, you know, there was a mention of high value products. So should we uh, look at, uh, you know, in the long term, high value product increasing further from here, um, thereby increasing the possibility of further margins, uh, you know, from current levels? See, uh, Mukul, uh, this is Anupam here, and uh, I would address this question. So overall, this margin improvement which we have seen in Q4 is a result of a uh, couple of things. One, that the products and services, uh, the, ma the ratio has been more skewed towards product. We have delivered uh, better volume as compared to Q Q3, particularly on the fiber cable side where we have seen a better utilization <coughs> coming, to, uh, coming close to 90% of capacity which was running at about 60% till last quarter. So that is one and that has also given us operating leverage uh, in our operating performance. So that is uh, sustainable. Number two, in terms of contribution of the new product continues to be there, so that is similar to last quarter, so that again plays a role. Uh, definitely the margin uh, coming from better realization is also spanning out because we are saying that we continue to remain 
in long term order book so we we don't have any spot order booking and therefore that revenue or that realization but overall we can see uh, part of this uh, margin sustaining we believe in uh, growing the absolute value of ebitda the margin is a derivative of mix uh, while if you look at from uh, the full year perspective we are still at 25% so i think uh, as long as we continue to maintain this kind of revenue mix uh, we would see that uh, 24 25% margin but absolute ebitda we are uh, quite sure that it will continue to improve on quarterly basis sure uh, and anupam just to uh, on a related uh, you know question uh, now that you are coming close to or, or you will be coming close to the uh, capacity in your osc uh, you know production line uh, any thoughts on uh, the expansion there uh, do you think it is possible that it will be a fy19 or fy20 event considering that uh, the uh, bharat net orders uh, would start flowing in soon sure so we are working on that plan as well that as we see better utilization of capacity we have started working uh, on the ground in terms of preparation for the expansion uh, we are working in terms of uh, location existing location or a new location those kind of decisions we still need to take uh, maybe at uh, some point of time in this quarter we may come with uh, some uh, announcement on this okay and um uh, on on bharat net phase 2 uh, you know are, are you l1 in any of the uh, any of the areas and any update there uh, currently nothing to update there so we are current uh, in uh, pretty active in the opportunities both for products as well as for system integration as anything comes we'll definitely inform you sure thanks and and if i may squeeze one final thing in uh, on an um, you know sorry but uh, you you have seen a very significant pick up in europe revenues uh, during fy18 uh, how how should we see that uh, you know in the longer term is that something which is going to continue yeah the mix that we have of 50 50% uh, is is coming in from a visibility on the order book perspective so uh, uh, i wouldn't want to co- comment on europe versus china uh, but broadly we would uh, be at at those kind of numbers for the next few quarters or so so again mukul absolute number we are driving uh, and uh, the percentage of revenue or percentage of export between china and uh, europe are again derivative and can vary quarter on quarter but uh, as a design we are uh, moving with new customers and new geographies within europe and and otherwise also because as we are increasing volume we need to capture that understood um that's all from my side thank you Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mayank Babla from Dalal and Rocha. Please go ahead. Good evening, sir. Thank you for taking my question. Uh, sir, I had uh, one question mainly was that uh, our uh, contribution from do- uh, domestic, uh, as in contribution to domestic revenues, has uh, come down from 63% to 46%. And uh, so, in absolute terms, it's uh, down by uh, 9.7% year on year. So, I just wanted your view uh, about the uh, domestic environment in terms of orders and um, uh, for the next two years at least. Apart from the uh, 3,500 crore order that you won, other than that. So, man, overall, uh, the uh, domestic uh, uh, part we continue to be overall at a macro level pretty bullish on the domestic segment. Uh, which is uh, for us which is defense so navy order is a representation of it bharat net is a representation of it and we are very very bullish that uh, the capex spending by all the telecom providers to for their uh, 4g backhaul is kicking off so i i like we are not reading a whole lot into uh, the shift in domestic revenues between 17 and 18 we are fundamentally seeing uh, continuing to be very very bullish about the indian market and continue to play a very strong role here okay so okay so and uh, ap- uh, apart from that the last question are we looking at any uh, geographic expansion from the current mix that we are present in so we are pretty focused we are pretty focused so what uh, we have is india we have europe we have china and then some uh, focus in middle east and latin america Okay, so there is no plans uh, uh, to expand into Australia. I think I think of substantial order or material order. Okay, that's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you. 
Next question is from the line of Harshit Patel from Equilis Securities. Please go uh, ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, sir, uh, we have told that uh, uh, we could bring about another 10 million fiber kilometers by, CY8, by the end of CY18. So, sir, uh, would China contribute to uh, this capacity expansion or everything will happen in India only? Uh, Harshit, uh, the glass we are fully producing it in India. China, we have set up some part of the expansion in downstream, which is in the draw part. So it's going to be a combination of uh, both India and China. The, the expanded capacity of that we are putting in uh, of 20 million, glass is all coming in India, and draw is half equally coming in India and China. Okay. Uh, sir, uh, then on the realization part, over the last analyst call, uh, you had mentioned that the current realizations for the contract prices are around $8.5. So, sir, have we seen any more uptake uh, on that front or they, are, uh, con they continue to be uh, somewhere around $8.5? Yeah, so, uh, Harshid, the overall uh, realization uh, from our perspective continue to be in that range, $8.5. And uh, as I said, that spot dollar spot prices are higher. They are continuing to be higher. But from our perspective, long-term order book which we carry uh, and we uh, serve our revenue from there is on that margin, um, on that realization. Okay, sir. And sir, just one last question. So, sir, uh, what would be the growth for the elite core for the current fiscal year? For the last one, I mean, FY18 one. Uh, for us, Harshit, uh, services and software is now getting fully integrated uh, into what we do. And within the, that business, we saw almost a revenue jump for uh, services and software combined of the order of 40%. Okay. And sir, uh, for the current quarter, what would be our mix between products and services? Uh, Quarter-wise, we do not have those uh, mixes, uh, essentially, uh, because it's now getting very, very integrated. All the offerings are becoming network offerings with product, service, and software getting integrated. Sure, sir. Uh, that's, all, uh, that's all from my side. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Srini Rao from Deutsche Bank. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, two questions I had. Uh, one... Uh, is there an impact of uh, positive or negative on your margins with the shift to international uh, geographies in terms of the revenue mix? Uh, uh, I mean, we have seen a big shift this year and an improvement in margins. So is that uh, something to, uh, does it correlate? Uh, uh, yes, Srini, uh, the shift to inter the, the margin expansion, as Anupam explained earlier, is uh, uh, we have gone from 23% last year to 25%, and it's been with the, uh, better volume, better operating leverage, and uh, more value-added products. Understood. Uh, and secondly, my other question was, uh, the idea of Vodafone merger, you know, they both have, uh, you know, extensive fiber networks. There is a talk of them having some, you know, common fiber uh, overlap. I mean, it, does the merger have any impact, at least from your perspective, on any, on the, on the, on the medium-term demand, as in, can it fall or, or be lower? or you don't think that could be the case given that continued investments in 4G will continue? For us, uh, uh, we, believe, uh, we are seeing that the investments will increase only and all the discussions are in that uh, direction only. Because the combined uh, uh, map also, the, the 4G backhaul penetration with towers is less than 20% for the combined as well. And that's our market. And... Uh, for anyone to go further in uh, 4G, fiber backhaul strengthening is absolutely required. So, uh, so for us, it's uh, we see it uh, becoming a stronger company with stronger balance sheet and with uh, greater propensity to spend. Understood. Uh, this is helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Tejas Sheth from Reliance Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. Uh, uh, Tejas, we can barely hear you. Uh, request yeah, can you hear me now? Louder. Hello? Can you hear yes, me now? please go ahead. Uh, yeah, sir. Uh, we saw a significant jump uh, in demand of, from China in um, CY17. Uh, I just wanted to know at what stage of deployment is China for 5G? I mean, they've already started and that's why this demand has come or it is still the 4G front all is where the deployment happened? So, Tejas, uh, uh, China has uh, been more focused on 4G as well as fiber to the home. Uh, 
uh, 5G trials, some trial will start with China Mobile at the end of this year. So 5G demand is yet to come. Okay, okay. So globally, none of the regions are actually seeing deployment of 5G. So because the standards are still being made out, so this year uh, SK Telecom in Korea is uh, will do something. Uh, we will see 2019, uh, uh, hopefully, with the standards getting frozen, commercial deployments of uh, 5G. But several places within the world, uh, AT&T is talking Verizon, SK Telecom, as well as uh, NTT Docomo, they are all talking about doing uh, trial deployments in 2018. Okay, and are we working with any of these companies? Uh, uh, yeah, we are working with a few of them. Well, yeah, we are working with a few of them on the cable side. And what we see, the overall 5G deployment is clearly a 8 to 10 year cycle. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, so my second question is on the broad strategy. Uh, how do you see the ratio of having a contracted volume versus playing in the spot market? That's absolutely clear, Tejas. We've been maintaining this for the last two, three years also that... Uh, we do not uh, play in spot market. We are more and more uh, becoming an integrated network provider and a partner to our customers. Okay. So for us, uh, 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 the short-term opportunity does not mean much. So if you get an offer to play 100% on the contract side, you would do that? We are actually doing that today also. Okay, okay. And so lastly, um, what would be our order bit, bit pipeline as on FI18? Uh, it would be, uh, Tejas, uh, we explained that a couple of quarters ago also that uh, we are focusing now on uh, the winnability of the bids that we go in instead of increasing the size of the funnel. Okay. The size of the funnel now uh, post uh, this uh, uh, Navy APO would be seven to 8,000 crores. And this, most of that will be towards the service side? Or uh, it's it's, integration side? No, it's both. It's both. So with BharatNet, etc. happening, there is a big funnel that we have put in for BharatNet as well. Okay, fine, Thanks a lot. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Varun Agarwal from BOI AXA Mutual Funds. Uh, hi. Uh, congratulations on good set of numbers. Uh, most of the questions have been answered. I uh, just trying to understand a few bits from the pricing side. Uh, uh, last time we were answered from the call that uh, the pricing for the contracts which are renewed for long term are plus minus 10%. So just trying to understand, what will be changed uh, for, I mean, expected to change for this year? Uh, or And uh, second question is, in the 5G terms, uh, will that uh, alter our overall margin profile in the sense uh, of the new product which will come out? Thanks. Varun, uh, the contracts that we've been talking about, uh, this year the uh, price is anyway frozen. Uh, the, the range that we talked about will be for the subsequent years of the contract. So... Uh, and uh, as far as 5G products, the demand is uh, going up by multifold times. Very uh, early right now to say what that will do to the margin profile, but clearly these are very high density, different kind of products where we are taking a lead in manufacturing and designing and developing those products. And as we said earlier, working with some of the telcos and deploying them as well. Okay, but right now we are not contributing. I mean, the 5G itself is not contributing anything to our revenue right now. No, no. Oh, okay. Okay. On the services side, uh, how do you see the overall services business spanning out over like two, three year uh, period? Uh, do you think the overall, and because the kind of orders we are getting, uh, the service business is also getting bigger and bigger in terms of size. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, up, uh, it's difficult for us. Uh, we, uh, we do not neither uh, uh, predict nor drive a revenue growth over. Uh, we look at every opportunity on its own merit. Uh, so this is a good opportunity that we have. We are going to focus on getting this order in the next uh, three, four months uh, and start focusing on deployment. There are a couple of other opportunities. We are very, very selective in the services business. And the numbers, whatever happens, will be a result of that uh, focus. Uh, and if you see the order book currently, out of the 5,000 crores, uh, about 80% uh, is towards the product side. With the Navy order happening, uh, the move, uh, the 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 overall mix will start becoming 50-50%. But it's very difficult to predict as to how the revenue profile will start looking three years from now. 
sure sure uh, one last question uh, uh, if uh, if we enter do geography or uh, do client uh, generally we are on a long term contract but uh, do the margins change for the new client because the set of the availability of the order so just trying to understand how the competition is uh, i mean if you can help with that so varun uh, if you look at uh, we have increased our volume consistently over last more than 7 8 years and uh, our margins have continued to improve and that is reflecting that our new customers we don't need to compromise on the margin so margin continue to be the same that which we do with the existing customers or new customers so that doesn't have any bearing okay so the pricing model is remain same for the okay okay thanks a lot for answering me all the best Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Snigda from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Uh thanks once again sir. Uh, congratulations on a great set of numbers. So quick questions from my side. One on the margin front, you know, you've already mentioned that part of the margin expansion that we saw is sustainable um you know going into the future obviously subject to realizations so can we assume that the 24 25% margins will sustain in FI19 um FI20 and just uh, on on that front you know on pricing we we have most of our contracts like you said are long dated contracts so can we assume that there is little risk on realizations at least for the uh, next possible future say 2 to 3 years So make the I mean just to uh, simplify this uh, thing business by business if you look at I think we will continue to maintain uh, the margin profile uh, which we are demonstrating so the final number at a console num- console level will be mixed uh, so as if we uh, get this uh, uh, order sometime in early quarter early this year the execution will also start happening on navy side so that may have a bearing on the overall margin profile but as we are maintaining that that absolute ebitda we continue to see moving up number one number two in terms of your uh, question on the contractual uh, uh, orders which we have got and the variability in that again from the market side which we see we are not seeing any uh, uh, reduction in the prices the prices continue to be very very strong both at the spot level as well as uh, long term level and as anand mentioned that we are partnering with our customers particularly large customers so that we can uh, continue to get visibility of volume rather than the realization because as you have seen for us volume certainty is far more important than the realization uh, realization have already moved up and we believe for next couple of years we will continue to play with that kind of number uh, that will give us uh, this continuity of uh, margin on business Okay and lastly you know on the working capital front we've seen receivable days move up from 97 to about 115 days is there anything to read into that So from receivable perspective uh, there is nothing major in terms of uh, uh, this may be quarterly kind of thing where some of the things may have gone for a uh, higher number uh, part of the reason could be our export uh, increasing i need to dig uh, into more detail uh, to understand the real reason but i mean that could be the one reason i can think of as a fiber cable business is increasing and that mostly goes outside the country for a longer date term um all right actually i apologize i think uh, it's just an increase from 97 to 99 days uh, apologize that's all thank you for my side okay thank you The next question is from the line of Pranav Shatriya from Eagle Voice. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, thanks for the opportunity and congratulations for a good set of numbers. Uh, I was just trying to understand a little bit uh, in more detail, you know, how the margin has uh, improved. Uh, because, uh, you know, if uh, my understanding is correct, uh, OFC uh, typically has a lower gross margin versus OF. Uh, and uh, the margin performance is largely coming from uh, lower uh, uh, i mean uh, you know uh, uh, lower cost of uh, goods uh, and that means higher gross margin so can you just uh, you know even qualitatively give some color on you know how how the moving parts uh, are on the realization volume uh, in 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 the different part that is of ofc and uh, services Uh, sure. So uh, I think we explained that in the early part of the call. Uh, part of it is could be mix of uh, 
the service and uh, solution business uh, uh, in the quarter being lower. Uh, second part, uh, you are right about uh, margin and cable business being lower than uh, bare fiber business. But at the same time, since we are now using better, uh, uh, I mean, utilization is getting much better, uh, that operating leverage is coming in. So that's how the overall margins are improving and showing uh, in the final result. Uh, is there is anything to do with the OFC realization as well uh, going up? So the OFC realizations are uh, aligned with the fiber realization, so that is anyway captured when we can uh, take into account the fiber realization. So I think uh, more of it is uh, our operating leverage in the fiber cable facility. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Samir Pardigar from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, this is Bhupendra. So uh, I had a couple of questions. The first one is that since we have expedited this uh, capacity expansion, so how does the CAPEX spread looks for FY19 and FY20? See, uh, for the CAPEX, uh, I think it, it will still be spread over FY19 and FY20 equally. Uh, we have done um, the total CAPEX is going to be about 1,200 crore and uh, a significant uh, part uh, is going to be spread over uh, next two years, FI19 and 20. What was the total CAPEX for 18, if I can? That. Overall 525 crore, which was also having some part of the old CAPEX, which we did, and uh, therefore it came in the current uh, year. On the top of that, uh, some advances and initial uh, payments for F this 20 million CAPEX. I would say FI19 and uh, 20, FI19 could be more of similar nature, 500 crore roughly, since we are looking at expediting the capex, so it may it may be higher in FI19. Maybe balance will spill over to FI20. Okay, so out of the 1200, uh, uh, have we actually made two 300 odd crore kind of a capex this year? Sir? Absolutely, 300. All right. <coughs> All right, which means that uh, this spread will be 500 and 400 respectively. Is okay. rough. Yeah. All right. No, now the second thing was, what is the status of the NFS uh, project? Uh, have we completed it, and how much of is it is left in the order book? So that is still there. Uh, this is likely to get executed in the FI19, and uh, the remaining portion is appearing in the service uh, order book. Maintenance. Since software order book, yeah. Uh, that's, uh, that's uh, okay. And uh, this Navy order is uh, executable over how many years? Uh, I, I, I just couldn't About hear it either. About two years after we get it. About two years after you get it, and uh, we are likely to get it by the second half of the up to the second half of the year. Is is a fair assumption? Up to the end of H1 of this year. Yeah, that's 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 uh, uh, fair enough. I think in terms of realization, I think uh, like we said that uh, OF realization con uh, continues at around eight eight and a half dollars. So OFC should be at the same level of eighteen eighteen and a half. Am I right in my? Absolutely, yeah, right. All right. That's, uh, that's and in terms of the overall product uh, and uh, services, I uh, I hear uh, you saying that uh, services grew by 40 percent, and we're talking uh, talking about uh, the re services revenues grew by 40 percent this year for 18, right? Sorry. Uh, I, in the call, uh, you mentioned that uh, the services and uh, the system integration that uh, software revenues grew by 40 percent for the year this year. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, about that. Yeah. So, which means that uh, this uh, mix of product to services would have changed from 70-30, or how how is it looking right now for the year? I'm asking. Uh, yeah, so uh, to that extent, uh, the services part is closer to now. Uh, uh, last year also it was around that, uh, a little less than 25. So right now it's around 25 plus. And uh, what's happening is now a lot of the contracts that we are doing, the products and services or services and software is getting included in the whole thing. And it's okay. becoming difficult to uh, create this clear classification. A lot of products are also going in our service delivery. So elimination comes into play and that then it becomes difficult to sort of explain it in terms of uh, breakup. Yeah, so actually, you see, I was working out uh, with the margins things also, and I, I, I understand the broader margins that we make across the segments, which is the OF we make 30 plus percent kind of a margin, when OFC comes around to 20, 22 percent kind of a margin. So uh, ha how has the utilization changed this margin trend? Have we actually trended upwards with 
Yeah, so that's, far, that's visible uh, 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 yeah. for the last few quarters. So last few years, rather, the margin profile has been improving because of the better utilization. And oh, the whole, uh, whole volume itself, because the fiber business has great operating leverage. All and, right. And uh, that uh, on OFC, the capacity utilization is increasing quarter on quarter. So uh, previous uh, uh, year and a half, two years back, we were uh, talking about making a margin of uh, 31, 32 percent in OF and 22, 23 percent in OFC. How does it look right now in terms of the typical margin? I mean, at this kind of uh, utilization, uh, I just wanted to know. Yes, uh, those numbers, uh, Bupin, are not correct. It's not 20 to 20. It would be better if you can on the offline have a discussion with the IR team. Sure, sure. sure. I'll, I'll definitely get back, get back to them. Yeah. Okay, thanks a lot. Sure. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dipesh Kashyap from Equilus Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Just one quick question. Uh, so currently, we understand that prices are increasing mainly due to global preform shortage. So you have mentioned in the slide that it may continue in CY18. Uh, but can you give us some sense of how much preform capacity is in the process and going to come by, let's say, CY19? So the page we keep a tab of it, it's, uh, it's difficult to know exactly when uh, uh, there is the industry continues to be slightly uh, not very open. Uh, but what we are looking essentially is that the supply demand situation will continue to be tight, which is uh, which is continuing, uh, which is reflecting of the fact that we are actually now booking orders for the calendar year 2020 as well. So uh, we we are fully booked for 18. We are largely booked for 19 with the expanded capacity, and we are booking some for 2020 as well. Oh, that is great. So, like uh, the capacity shortage uh, mainly came in CY17, according to your slide. So, if I typically look at it, it's a two-year cycle, right, for the for the new uh, capacity to come. So, will I be right to assume that the capacity uh, supply can actually come in excess in CY19 globally if all the players are increasing it right now? Uh, it's, it's difficult. As we said, it's difficult. The reflection for us comes from what we hear from the suppliers and what we hear from our customers. The fact okay. that our customers are wanting to give us contracts for 2020 gives us a confidence that the supply tightness might continue till then. Okay, fair enough. Thank you. Thanks a lot, sir. Sure. Thank you very much. Due to time constraints, we'll take that as the last question. I would now like to hand the conference back to the management for any closing comments. So I would uh, once again like to thank everyone for attending this call, and I hope that we were able to address and clarify all your queries and comments. For any further clarifications and discussions, you can feel free to contact our investor relations team, including Anupam and myself. And we really hope to continue our association and dialogue in the future. I thank uh, all the participants for showing their interest in our company. Thank you and good evening. Thank you. Thank you very much.